Hey guys and gals, so this is a video on cosmic ray detection and how you can do it in your own home or garage or shed or whatever it is that you use. And it's relatively simple, it was first introduced to me by Bob Grenier, but there's a lot of people involved in this type of sensing and, they, and NASA uses it, many people use more advanced sensors, but we're just going to use a simple a camera phone or or webcam in this application. So let's get into it. I'll get into more technical details in just a sec. Now there is some terrestrial sources of radiation, but for the most part on large scale and high orders of magnitude, the radiation comes from a cosmic source, whether it be from galactic nuclei or supernova or whatever. Um, as the radiation passes through our atmosphere it obviously is cascading it passes through many different molecules and uh, charged particles and goes through a process known as Compton scattering and so that only the most powerful emissions from outer space will reach the surface of the earth and sea level uh, those in particular are like muons and things of that nature and the two sensors types that you're going to be using are CCD, which stands for Charge Coupled Device, or CMOS, or CMOS, which, starts, which stands for Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor. And the difference between the two is one acts like a whole bunch of little capacitors with a, with a diode, essentially, That's, um, and the diode being the photodiode, and, uh, and then it goes to an amplification uh, IC. And the CMOS is more like uh, has a bunch of little ICs on it and um, and little MOSFETs essentially. There's just a whole bunch of transistors. So that's kind of the difference between the two. To start, you'll need your webcam and you want to tape it up really well to make sure that no light can get in. Uh, black electro electrical tape works really well. And I'm using just a Rev Gear or a Gearhead camera, uh, and you can use any camera that you, you have that will work. You can even use use a really old you know round logitech camera so after that's been done we get some of our other materials obviously we'll need the tape to cover it up some scissors and shears might be necessary depending on your thickness of lead um, some gloves because we're going to be handling lead a, a tin if you want to put your camera in the tin with the lead I didn't use the tin, but, and then this is the lead sheet that I use, which is a one, one thirty-second inch. So we just slowly shield the camera out. I just did straight, straight away as a detector. I'm not, I'm not going to be using the camera, taking it in and out of a, of a box or anything, but that if it's completely up to you. It's your preference. So I calculated, um, in order to get the radiation levels that I would that I'm looking for, um, I'm going to need approximately 10 turn or 10 10 overlaps of this lead shielding, and I want to be a little bit under um, what would be uh, muon detection from just standard sources. So uh, one centimeter is recommended. I'll I'll link some of the paper papers that are that are important to th this type of sensor um, regarding shielding and what type of um, radiation you'll, you'll see depending on your shielding thickness and all that kind of stuff um, so I'm just basically wrapping this up really nicely and overlapping it's it's crucial that you try to overlap as much as possible it's better to have a little too much than a little too less basically um, so I'm, I'm shooting for just a little under one centimeter, but if I go over one centimeter, that's fine. All right, and then the final product here, the crude product is uh, approximately eight millimeters of lead shielding. And uh, I'm just gonna tape it up, some more electrical tape, and it's red, caution that's, that it's heavy. <laughs> no, to caution that it's it is lead, and uh, I don't want my kids like sucking on it. So now we're gonna go into the the fun the fun goodies. So this is the program that 
we're using. This is um, the Cosmic Ray Finder. And this program basically captures it. It's, it's a program put together by Alexi Vornin. Um, I'm not sure if I said that right, but uh, you can change it from grayscale to whatever to actual the actual color. But uh, that's the website, and I'll I will link the where you can get this down below. It also gives you a warning sound if you get a cosmic ray hit, um, and then it tells you samples, and then obviously where the the directory you can put it in. But as soon as you get a hit, it will save that that one instance. And you can close it, and it will be down in your bottom right taskbar. Um, that's still open. So you can open it at any time if you hit the X. So now we are going to visualize a cosmic ray. So I ran about a 48-hour test, and I picked up uh, one cosmic ray with the shielding and all. So basically what we're gonna do is we go into Adobe Shop, Photoshop. Um, I go for the 1980 by 1080 and uh, we have our cosmic ray hit. And so obviously it's very tiny. So we'll have to zoom in. And now we can kinda of make out what it looks like. So now we'll cut it out, and in doing so, we will move it to the file that we made, which was a 1920 by 1080. And you can see it's very small, so uh, you'll need to hit Control T, and you can transform it and enlarge it. And then Adobe does its magic to smooth it out. And once that's done, we go into new mesh from layer and we need a depth map and we're going to transform this as raw as possible into a 3D object. And what I like to do is put the light directly over the top so we can see the gradient. There we go. Now we have a top of top of topographical data of the detection, so we can really see if it is a, a one of the one of the three sources. If it's a worm, or if it's a blip, or what have you. Uh, and I hope to try to find some way. <laughs> it's challenging, but I try to find some way to, to be able to extrapolate the pixel count and how high the brightness level is um, to see what our uh, KEV or MEV emission would be. That would be fantastic, but I'm not sure if it's if if we can work it out through Adobe. So uh, one other way you can make your your topographical view look really pop out and stand out <clears throat> is you can add a gradient a color gradient to the lowest energy state to the highest energy state um, you can also invert it there's lots of things you can do to play around with it and i haven't messed around with gimp which is a free s software to see if i could do the same process but essentially what i do is i just go from the lowest point of the top topographical map to the highest point and it should render and there you get there you kind of go you get your dark points and your light points and I haven't found a way to easily wrap this and I'm sure there's probably some Adobe uh, Photoshop Pro is like what are you doing that's a terrible way to do it but I haven't found a good way to wrap the image when it's in its 3D form because Photoshop's not really meant for 3D. Um, I have gone into After Effects and messed around with it a little bit, but I didn't. I want to. I wanted to keep this as simple as possible. 
All right, now I'm just gonna speed it up here a little bit. Basically, I'm just going to all four sides of the object and doing a gradient, uh, the gradient overlay. And also making sure it looks relatively uniform. But I, I also need to do just a little touch up work too. So I, I get some color um, samples that was ink. that was not how you do it, <laughs> but I get some color samples, and um, and kind of copy the yellow, and clean it up on the top, and go over the whole thing basically. Then I go to the ground state, and do the same thing there, add in the purple down below, and make it look beautimous. It's the bling. I'm adding the bling. It's painstakingly difficult to add purple bling in case anybody's inexperienced with bling adding. And behold, the final product. And if anybody has any suggestions to make it better, feel free to comment. And this is just a quick and easy way to throw together a topographical representation of uh, Cosmic Ray.